This week on Awesome Cast, Chilla is Iron Man, mechs are going to do battle, and we talk about the future of TV, the future of Mac graphics drivers, the future of Windows creators, and so much more. Awesome Cast. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky talk tech. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and this is the awesome cast, Pittsburgh's Geek Fest. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area, podcaster extraordinaire. Some call me the podfather, apparently. I still don't feel right saying that. Okay, just tried that one out. With me on the line, it's a very low end show here, the very low key. Hanging out, kicking back with uh, John Chachilla over in Studio C. Hey, how's it going? It's fine. Still rainy Tuesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome to Weathercast. Uh, of course, uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Calm, and I still have the redirect for live.awesomecast.net if you want to join us here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, you can also join us on the Facebook page, Awesomecast over there. And that's where the uh, stream is, where a bunch of people are joining us this evening, including The Riz, who's helping us as the uh, de facto producer for this evening. Uh, Missy is out teaching social media to some, some uh, folks out in Springdale, PA today, so she was not available. Thank you, Riz, for stepping in for that, uh, doing the tweets and helping out uh and my mom is in the chat room guys so look out for that and uh, <laughs> as mike pound so many more you can join us become part of this show share things on there also the awesome cast facebook group and on twitter at awesome cast and we do put a lot of the stories here in the show uh you can also subscribe to the show on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and the video versions on the youtube and the facebook for awesome cast including interviews uh the awesome chat interviews including chilla's awesome tips i finally edited them there's one more coming i know three of them we finally got them down when we do those in like november uh so go check those out on on the video feeds uh for facebook and youtube for our awesome cast and uh, i want to know what you guys think of it should we do more uh so far it, it seems like a pretty positive response it does seem like a positive response and it's not just my aunts and uncles and parents it's it's, it's other people i know i, I was wondering i know I saw it posted to Twitter and I saw it posted to uh, Facebook, making sure I retweeted it and liked it. And I'm hoping that others will do the same. Did, did you post that? Cause I couldn't find it on LinkedIn and I felt like that was really good LinkedIn content. Oh, I, I don't think I did. Uh, uh no, I, I didn't directly. Uh, absolutely not. But that's definitely something that we probably should do uh, at, at some point. So, yeah, no, that's definitely some really good uh, LinkedIn. I love the, some of the comments that were, um, um, sadly, I use this a lot because the last one that we posted <laughs> was the uh, magnifier. And, and also good that we got them out before, uh, you know, iOS 11, uh, which was a little bit of a concern for a moment there. Uh, but you know, uh, but thank you so much for that and helping. I, and we, we've, uh, added something a little extra to the end, uh, of the awesome tips. So we'll put that out here, uh, probably in a little, little bit here. Uh, so, so please thank, thank you for everybody on the feedback for that. And we'll see about, uh, maybe doing a few more of those. Um, so, uh, and you can also, uh, you know, aside from that, you can join us, uh, uh, join our friends that are streaming us. Uh, I know we're at uh, about noon Eastern time, and we're also uh, on the 405media.com and also on Rivers Edge PGH dot com uh streaming uh, around there so go check out the schedule to see when we're coming up there uh so thank you so much to those groups for supporting us and getting us in front of a few more eyeballs ear holes i guess more more appropriate for the audio versions there on their their audio streams and uh both have some great content river's edge with some local pittsburgh music and the 405 with a lot of uh talk radio and also carry our other feature uh the wrestling mayhem show 
Also, thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to the Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level, as well as Mike Fedor at the uh, fan of the show uh, level as well. They've been supporting us for a good while here on the show. Uh, and that's uh, this is a per month thing. If you want to support the show there, uh, toss a little bit in. Or we have some levels. If you need something uh, uh, talked about on the show, want to get the word out, please go check that out over there. Uh, thank you so much for those that have been supporting us there or sharing the show or showing up in the chat room every week. Uh, I, just your presence and commenting helps it get in front of other people. And we really, really do appreciate that. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And I think, Chilla, you have maybe the awesomest thing of the week. So uh, mine is, <clears throat> and I actually saw this. It was actually announced... I think right after Halloween 2015 um, that they were going to have Marvel was going to partner with Hasbro and they were going to come out with um, a bunch of, of quality, high quality uh, toys. Uh, One of them being the the, the first two to the the market where it's going to be a a full size um, Iron Man shield and the second one was going to be the Iron Man electronic helmet. Oh my! Um, I I actually looked for these uh, multiple times over the the year of 2016 and couldn't find them anywhere. Nor could I find other other than the announcement articles um, information about them. So I kind of gave up. And oddly enough, I was walking through Toys R Us, and in the Marvel toys section, I saw. Uh, the legends type stuff. And it was the Iron Man helmet and the uh, Captain America shield. I, I didn't buy the, the, the shield, but I quickly snapped up the full size oh, there it Iron is. Man helmet. Look at and it. if you watch, if, if you watch the gold, um, you'll actually see me wearing it when I entered into the show. Um, so the inside is actually adjustable to your head size. It's definitely meant for an adult, um, we had Christopher wearing it the other day and it's a little big for him. And that's because the eyes are, there's small slits for the eyes and where they line up on your face. It's mm-hmm. definitely not meant for a kid. Um, it does take uh, four triple uh, A batteries, um, which actually then allows you to um, illuminate and light up the eyes. You can actually see through them while they're on. It also adds some sound effects. Um, one of my favorite parts of this toy, which I've seen a lot of cosplay um, stuff try to pull this off, but the but the front actually comes off. Um, so you can open up the mask, take this off. There's a way to actually dock it on so you can have it up um, while you're in there, or you can actually have it down in its normal place. Um, obviously, as I, as I put it back on, I don't know if you could hear that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> kind of makes some sound effects and lights up the eyes i imagine that's a um, little more prominent than what i'm hearing over your microphone that probably yeah um and as it uh, it's kind of looks flashy but the the lights actually have three different light settings so if you want to dim them they don't have to be bright they are leds so they're when your head's in there um it is kind of bright i wish i would have had the forethought um tonight to put on a Bluetooth headset because then I could be wearing this throughout the entire show. Um, but my headset unfortunately doesn't fit in there. Well, like I said, on the inside, let me take this back off. Um, it's all high powered magnets, which is really nice. And then that trigger activates all the sound effects. Um, like I was saying on the inside, there's actually, and I don't know if you can really see it, probably not. Um, there's a, plastic screw that you can kind of turn and it will actually shrink and grow kind of the inside that molds to your head and on the back um the back actually kind of lifts up a little bit and lets you get your head in there and then it clips and locks back into place which is pretty nice um it is like a high quality plastic and the paint job on it is quite phenomenal so i'm I'm pretty happy with it that's awesome. I kind of wish we had that for a thing that we did. <laughs> you guys will see when this next video comes out. Um, but uh, no, that's that's sweet. So so once again, big boy toys. Uh, I I like that you 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 can put it up so you can do that. Uh, let's get some Robert Downey Jr. FaceTime mode, and also mm-hmm. so you're not dying while you're walking around a uh, Comic Con, right? 
Yeah, it's a, it does get a little warm in there, but there's there's kind of like some mouth slits so people can easily hear you. Um, like I said, I found it very easy, even with my glasses on, to see through Good. through the, the eye area. So very, very nice, very nice build quality. Um, super, super excited to, to have and will probably wear to bed nightly. That's awesome. That's awesome, uh, which is which is nice because uh, we well I was gifted a uh, Darth Vader helmet that that sits here in the studio. My head's too big for it, and most people it's too big. It's definitely I think it's definitely for kids, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was probably picked up at at a Walmart or something. And uh, it, yeah, we, we we can't like you can't you can put it on, but then like the helmet piece goes over and it just doesn't click in. Uh, mm-hmm. Your head's too big. Is this the one that has? The, does it have Velcro towards the top? Uh, no Velcro. No, it's like it's okay. like a plastic. They're like plastic clips. So I, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not like made by any means high end. Uh, so that, that's it. I, yeah, I have the the kids one from. I think it came out in seventy eight or seventy nine. Um, that I picked up at a garage sale that someone was using as part of a. A Halloween costume, and it, it's one of the. It's the old school. It's extremely hard to see out of, and they actually, unfortunately, because a kid did wear it, they cut some of the plastic around the neck piece. But it actually used Velcro to keep the top helmet attached to the bottom piece. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, I think I have it. I think it's actually at work on my desk. So, so my awesome thing um, is, I, I, how how did we just fall into having the most relatable awesome things of the week? Uh, <laughs> because my awesome thing is the news that uh, we finally know when the robot 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 the ro- the robot the robot duel will take place in the U.S. And uh, between the U.S. and Japan will take place. Now we we talked about here on the show the announcement back in the day. Uh, between these two companies where they kind of called each other out, uh, both making kind of their version of a giant robotic um, fighting machine, I guess. Uh, there's video, uh, if you guys are on the video version uh, of it, like picking up and dropping cars and things like that and uh, different versions that they have going on uh, and uh, what they've been doing over <laughs> testing a buzzsaw, apparently, with a person inside. Uh, but but manned vehicles, for the most part, uh, it's, it's good to go. It is going to be happening August 2017, um it's going to be over that's over two years since they first i can't believe it was that long ago because i remember everything again i remember us talking about that on the show i think it was like yesterday right uh but (laughs) but giant robots will fight for those of you that love uh uh, pacific rim or going back to the mech warrior robotech days uh this is for real (laughs) this is happening in the fight, are they actually going to man them, or are they going to remotely control I them? I do believe these are are by design manned robots. What's like, the life insurance policy on that one? My God, I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, uh, but the, there's like the, the, again, it's not. It hasn't been locked down to a date that they put out, but they just said this is happening in August. Um, so this this is it. Uh, Megbop says that it is keeping this location secret so we can guarantee there will be no more delays because I got to say how many people are going to, I mean, I, is there like international laws against this or something? Um, yeah. Yeah. I have no clue. Did, did anyone have the forethought to write international law around this? Listen, you know, the, the, the future when we know that we will have fighting robots, you know, this, this is, we have to be prepared, right? Right, I guess so. Right, I guess. <laughs> so it's going megabots, uh, and it's according to a uh, uh, an article on um, Mex Mex officially. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's I, I love it. I love it because it's. I mean, I, I, are we like at a point in our lives where like all the stuff you know that we kind of group on all these ideas are are like coming to fruition to the you know to the ultimate thing we have we're we're sending tourists up this up into space for ungodly amounts of money we have cars that are driving themselves we have mechs fighting each other somewhere between japan and u.s um i mean 
it's it's great. It's great. That's that's what we need. You know, we have we have in here for our wrestling show. We have the uh, WWE rule book. Apparently, we do need a robot fighting rule book. Rule book. Now, maybe there's one out there, Riz. Maybe they just, you just go search on Amazon because I do have a book I've been reading lately. That's the Care and Feeding of Zombies. Uh, so uh, you know, you, you, there's a book for everything. Also, how to avoid a Sharknado is uh, is up in the uh, bathroom reading library as well. So uh, that's that's where we're at, man. <laughs> Mex. Uh, so, all right. One thing that we know uh, we love that is uh, 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 definitely a great point of the future is good pizza. Our good friends at SliceOnBroadway.com have uh, been supporting the show with uh, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with uh, the perfect pepperoni pizza. You can check them out here in Beachview at uh, Slice on Broadway on the Broadway along the tracks, as well as Main Street in Carnegie, PA, and also at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hopefully, you guys uh, swung down there to warm up on opening day last Friday uh, when it was like freezing out there yeah, there was there was snow and it was a, it was a beautiful day a beautiful day to go just hide and get some pizza uh thank you so much to them supporting the show uh, we really really do appreciate it thanks guys uh for uh feeding the crew that comes in here for on a weekly basis between awesome cast and the wrestling mayhem show uh check them out pgh underscore slice on the twitter or uh slice on broadway on the facebook and the instagram all right chilla we got some stuff um Brandon shared this one, and the article technically is from, I believe, 2015, but that does not have me not want to talk about it, because uh, this is, and I double-checked the date, because that's how I knew it was 2015, because I double-checked the date to make sure this wasn't an April Fool's joke, because the video is too good, right, and the way that it does it. Um, how about, according to Digital Trends, again, uh, Brandon from the uh, uh, Facebook uh, group uh, for Awesome Cast uh, shared this, but uh, how about an R2 detailed inspired refrigerator that will deliver drinks to you? Huh. Hmm. I am, unfortunately, I can't get the the, the video is not planned for me, but I would really, really enjoy that idea. It would almost be like the R2 D2 that was on the on Jabba's um, sail barge, mm-hmm. <clears throat> where he was kind of riding around with the drinks on top of his. On top of his dome, I'm guessing this is more. It doesn't show much. Yet. It honestly doesn't show much in the video. It just shows shows one thing where you know, it pulls up to the guy, it opens up, and he pulls it out. You don't see the insides or anything like that. Uh, but it was developed by uh, Aegis Aqua brand. I, and again, this is a couple. This is Japan only. It was on pre order, uh, eight thousand dollars. Uh, back in 2015, uh, so so you know, kind of older, probably yeah, 2015, around the time when we're talking about the mech, the mech people uh, <laughs> uh, calling each other out, right? Uh, it is available. Wait, this is still on pre-order. This is has what? Come on, this has got to be some kind of joke or something, because it's still it's still on pre-order two years later. <laughs> so, one thing to keep in mind about the it being on pre-order was did they could they actually per, mass produce these and the reason i asked that thing about it is there is it going to be a very very long cord as it <laughs> rides around to keep your drinks cold what is it of, more like a what cooler kind of, what kind of battery do you need and it, it's <clears> like they're showing like it has like a remote and stuff uh so like i guess that's how he gets around because i'm like well this can't autonomous me come to you right uh, but it, it holds a six pack according to the picture. It does hold a okay. six pack. So there you go. Um, or you could get this guy and you can have him fight with your Roomba and have your own <laughs> mech wars, right? I, I think R2 D2 would beat out the Roomba. Yeah. And he could take him down and he's, I think you need to, I think you need to get one of each so we can find out. And he's drunk. So a little more reckless abandon there, right? <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> what else do we have here? Okay, right, so good news. Uh, of course, there was, you know, I try not to put bad news into this show. Uh, this was another one shared by Riz, actually. Uh, so, so uh, of course, you know, we know that the, the rules are struck down for uh, privacy rules uh, with your ISPs here in America. But don't worry, Canadians. Um, apparently, according to this, uh, uh, the CBC.ca, ISPs there can only share your personal information with your express consent. So so good good for you Canada. Uh it's nice to see that they 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 they're well that's I guess it's not the only thing. Um but uh well there you go. I, you know it, it was kind of curious to see uh that trend, you know, if that that is something that was um does it run on Android? <laughs> that's a good well, question. Sorry, sorry back on the R2D2 thing. 
what will be interesting um, is that as as other countries probably follow suit with Canada and make these announcements, will it bring any additional criticism to the U.S.'s policy around this? Mm-hmm. I still look at it as, I mean, what does Canada say about you know Facebook and Google and everybody else selling the same type of data, um, potentially even more personal data since most of that's HTTPS now and encrypted, so they really can't see. A lot of that data. So hopefully, I'd like to see Canada take it further, hmm. um, and then see what happens from a from a U.S. standpoint. Well, I guess that is the question. So, how much for the for the regular listener out there uh, when they hear a story about how hey, your ISP can can sell your data, and there's nothing anybody can do about it? Um, I mean, you you don't have options for ISPs. We have Comcast and Verizon here in the city, or if you're somewhere else, you have even less than that. Uh, so you can't really just go somewhere else, right? Uh, so so. Which is, you know, H- again, HTTPS. If you see that in the corner, you see the little lock, the little secure thing up in your browser. Nobody can see that, right? Like, not even your ISP, because it's just encrypted data. They they can see the URL you went to. Yeah, um, obviously, because it has to go somewhere, but they can't see. Like, if you were on Amazon, they couldn't see you necessarily clicking the pay button. They mm-hmm. could see that you went through the process, but. I don't like for instance this Google Hangout right. We're on an HTTPS stream. They can't look inside our conversation now. We're broadcasting it out to Facebook, so everyone can see it. But should we want to have a privatized conversation, the only people that could really check in on that would be me, you, and Google. Right. Right. So you got you got to have a little bit of kind of trust there too. So um, yeah, I mean it's. And again, these rules didn't exist before October in the first place, so we've kind of always had this as an option for our ISPs. So there's that. Uh, so I, I, I don't. It sucks. I don't know if it's a freak out moment, but it's definitely a pay attention moment, right? Uh, and be aware of what your ISPs are doing out there. So, okay. Uh, similar uh, ish uh, changes. Uh, the Verge. Uh, this one uh, actually. Shared by our friend Doug Durda of Should I Drink That and Yin's Love Barbecue. Uh, YouTube will no longer allow creators to make money until they reach 10,000 views. And that's total. That is, I have started a channel and 10,000 views have happened on my channel, right? Um, I, I was reading this a little more. Uh, this apparently is, a, uh, is, is meant to weed out bad actors between people that will um, upload copywritten content and throw that up and you know get taken down and just start a new one. Uh, also, an interesting effect, because uh, uh, YouTube's become under fire, if you listen to other, t- other tech shows uh, that talk about this, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, what if bad content, uh, the, the, the terrorists or, or something like that, uh, pop up uh, with, with, with something, and you get a Pepsi ad on it. You know, so a lot of advertisers are like, hey... We don't want this, you know, to be associated with some of the stuff that's happening on here. And those are the kind of accounts that they think will be weeded out with ads, at least. Um, if if you wait till that ten thousand view, it gives them time to algorithmically or otherwise kind of look at a channel before that happens. And I don't think you're automatically put into the uh, the uh, program for advertisements either. Um, so, and again, this is an effect, you know, a lot of our things were well over that 10,000 threshold on, on all of our accounts, uh, and, and have and not that we get a lot of revenue from YouTube or anything like that, you know, like the whole buck a month thing that happens there. But, uh, but it, it was kind of an interesting move for them. It, 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 and I, 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 I was hearing about this and I saw a couple of places where they had actually put 10,000 views per video. So I'm glad to see it's more on the channel level. Mm. Um, I, I, I wonder what over will, to your point is, is any of the real streamers going to be, or the, the, the video professionals that are, that are out there trying to, to get their videos viewed. It's probably not going to have much impact on them because they're all hitting those numbers. It, to your point, it's more meant mm. to, to curb the, the illegal content or the, the nefarious content. Yeah, we you're you're not making even if you hit the nine hundred nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine views, you probably haven't made much, right? Mm-hmm. To be significant, it's not <laughs> like you've lost out on a hundred dollars at this point. So, 
Uh, no, I think that's a good concession for them to make. So, all right, Sheila, uh, you got a few stories in here. What's uh, what's on top of your mind? Um, so, two of mine kind of go together. Um, if you're still running Microsoft Vista, what uh, Windows Vista um, today, April 11th, um, there's no they're no longer shipping new security updates, non security hot fixes or even free or paid assisted support. Um, so if you're, if you're on the, the Windows Vista builds, uh, it's time to upgrade um, or just live with no updates. Um, for, for an operating system that launched back in 2007, I mean, it had a good run. I, I don't see, out of all the operating systems, I think I see more XP still out there than I do Vista. It just didn't seem to be one of those widespread options. This is a this is a uh, XP shop here in some of our older machines. So, uh, yeah, but well, it was always also. I think it got it got moved along because I don't know how many times somebody came to me with a Vista problem where the solution became upgrade to seven. And it, that's one of the things. Yeah, I agree with and. St- Seven kind of came along quickly, and then seven became eight and became ten. Windows seven and eight could both be upgraded for free to ten. For that reason, I was surprised they didn't set some kind of hardware requirement combination. If you're on Vista, you also get to upgrade free to ten. Mm-hmm. I understand not going back to XP, um, but there were still machine shipping not too long ago with, with some Vista. I mean, I still saw it in stores and whatnot, not obviously after seven came out, but um, I was surprised they couldn't, a lot of those machines. I mean, I have a machine here that actually is sitting in the corner that has a Vista on it. Um, It could be upgraded because it's a, it's a pretty high end machine, but I got to find a a windows seven or 10 install to put on it. But I don't know. Now, the, the, the story that couples with this, um, the same day as they eliminate um, Vista support, the Windows 10 Creator update has launched. Um, so if you're out there um, and you're on Windows 10, you'll start to see that trickle out. Everybody's not going to get it first. They do a staged rollout, but today is, is the first day um, for that rollout. And then the other thing to note on the Windows side along with this is if you're like myself and you went into the updates panel and you said, I want to be on the insider program, um, insiders get the updates ahead of the, the regular standard deployment from Microsoft. You get pre-release operating system updates, not just security stuff. Um, you get new capabilities before everyone else. You do have the risk of it maybe not working as well, but it's typically tied directly to that capability, not the machine as a whole. Um, there's a, there's a couple different rings you can be on. There's the fast ring and the slow ring. Um, I run my machines on the slow ring just for stability purposes, but this is the one time per build that if you're on the insider ring, it's easy to jump off. So you can remove the, the slower fast ring options and go back to the, the, the standard update process And you're not going to be in some weird limbo in between build numbers. So right now, the fast ring, the slow ring, I think the fast ring, at least the slow ring and the the, the standard build are all the same build version number and everything's the same. So... If you're if you're not on the insider ring and you want to jump on, now's now's as good a time as any. If you're on and you want to get off the ride, um, go into your settings and stop getting insider content. Welcome to the exit and on ramp of uh, Windows Insider <laughs> Program at uh, Window Creators. Uh, uh, so, uh, so so it's finally rolling out. Have, have you had it roll into any of your uh, uh, windows in your life yet? So you're going to laugh. Every one of my Windows 10 machines, and there's a plethora of them, are all on the Insider rings. Of course, so I've are. had it for I've had it for a while. If you're if you're waiting for it, and there's something you want, you can go out and use the the uh, I think the Creator the the Media Creator program to to build an update or to build a, a like a system restore. That system restore can be used to 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 update your machine. Um, I've heard, I think, Paul Thorat talking about different ways to get that update. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've had it. I've had it for a little while, and then I, I'm kind of bummed. There were some things that I was looking forward to 
in the creators update that didn't make the final build. Maybe we'll see them in the future. So um, what are some things like, you know, I, I obviously don't care about it being on my studio computer. Well, I should probably be worried about it breaking my studio computer because it's not like I have an option, right? Uh, but I have a eh, subpar, midpar uh, uh, laptop that's running Windows 10. It's kind of my extra one. I use it to uh, interface with a la- uh, uh, an old printer so I can do DVD uh, prints and everything like that. Uh, is there anything that I really should look forward to that I will enjoy in creating, in gaming, or anything like that? Uh, this be a question, a good question for Kraus. Um, I'm actually, oddly enough, excited because... I don't have any great and wonderful photo editing software at work. Um, and paint is being completely, was completely tore down and, and built back up. There's some three there. You can actually now 3d render in Microsoft paint. Um, I'm just more interested in the, the streamline interface and some of the new tools in Microsoft paint as lame as that sounds. Um, I was actually looking forward to, there was a there was going to be a people hub, and there was going to be um, a kind of their take on GarageBand, and it didn't make final build. So I don't know if we'll see that later this year in Redstone three, or if we're I, I don't know if we're we going to see a creators update two next year. Uh, I'm not sure what they really plan to do with that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, let's get into some TV stuff, shall we? Sure. There's a lot of TV news. I believe, I, I feel like it was just launching and news was coming out as we were doing the show last week or maybe the next day. Uh, YouTube TV is a thing now. Um, we've heard about this. It's, uh, you know, I've seen it on, on uh, several of the, the podcasts I listen to, watch, I guess. Uh, it, it, it's YouTube's play, you know, in the world where we have our Sling TVs, our Direct TV Nows, and uh, you know, announced uh, uh, upcoming Verizon and, and Comcast over the top situations. Uh, it, this is their take. And, and $35 a month limited to how many uh net you know uh, uh, places that it is it's not here in pittsburgh at all it's stuff like new york san francisco uh, a couple other towns and uh, has all the locals uh has but again not everything right and, and i think i think when people are like well it doesn't even have half the stuff as anything else um always i i, I think you should always look at these services as that's a 1.0 wait a couple months look how full featured i think sling is and direct tv is probably becoming by now right uh mm-hmm. but the biggest thing from it uh you know aside from you know a, a nice interface uh, you know uh, some some cool stuff from, from what i've been seeing from some people that are actually in that uh market that have been showing off the video for it uh oh 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 kind of a, a disclaimer for this not available apparently not easily available for your television like it's in the apps. If you have like an Apple TV app, I don't think it it, it is compatible with it. Uh, I imagine you can Chromecast it, of course, if you you're using the YouTube app. Uh, so just so just kind of a little air of caution right there to not get too excited about. But again, 1.0, I'm sure it'll, it'll roll out. Um, YouTube. There was a good article over on Engadget. Uh, YouTube TV made this baseball fan finally cut the court, and that has been the conversation, right? Sports. And there's been parts of this. ESPN's been included with like things like Sling, and that was a big deal for that. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, this was a baseball fan, uh, presumably by looking at all the giant stuff in the pictures in San Francisco, and uh, that there was a combination of live games, unlimited DVR, and that was pretty much that was it for them. You know, uh, you can get MLB TV on here. You can you can get that kind of setup, and you can get the the ESPNs. Um, every time that I saw like a lineup of things like it was local channel local channel local channel sports 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 like that seems to be the focus with this package so for those that have been holding off for sports i would look at this if it's in your area or or look at it now to see is this something to anticipate when it's in my area uh for that sports lineup and see if it fits most of your stuff i'd be curious what you know uh friends of ours like uh i think aj was was really big into sports and that was one of his his hang-ups on cutting the court right uh and see what others would think out there uh but it, it looks like it's a pretty cool setup for for things and also great isn't it amazing where we've had this thing where uh cable television has been so locked down right uh, you know, I very fortunate where we are, of course, Chilla, that we have Comcast and Verizon as options for television, right? Yeah. 
and so now we're in this world where, well, your alternatives, uh, you can also get, yeah, there's satellite dishes, but now there's also Sling TV, which is dish, uh, Direct TV, and then the over the tops for, for again, yeah, Comcast, Verizon, uh, PlayStation View and everything. Like, we have a lot of competition there. They're all starting to look the same price-wise, um, but I, I think, you know, again, there's more choice. And I think that's going to the- only help as far as competition goes and everything as these become uh, maybe in the future, the way a lot of people, a a good, a growing number of people will be watching television. I I definitely agree with that. And and sports is always an interesting topic to bring in in, in, up in the, in this use case, because I'm not a big sports ball person, but I know a lot of people are. And some of the people I know say, you know, I want to cut the cord and all I want is sports. I don't care about anything else that's I have ESPN on or I have some other MLB or the NHL network, that kind of content. So I, I think this will actually cause a greater move to cutting the cord. The, the thing that worries me now is are we going to see price hikes or um, I know I, I – I heard Comcast in our area got rid of the um, bandwidth limitation on or the cap um, in our area to try to compete more directly with Verizon, which is a good thing, right? Like you're saying, um, Comcast in our area, I think it was a 250 gig um, limit per month before you started getting warnings and potentially overage fees. Um, They did wipe that out and I <clears throat> the one person I was talking to from Comcast, he was like, how are you going to go over 250 gig in a month? I'm like, okay, so if I if I download four Xbox games <laughs> on the Xbox One, I'm getting pretty close there. Um, so so I, I think it is something that they didn't necessarily think through. Um, and, and they're starting to turn that corner. But by having the competition here, it, it, it allows for... A, companies to try to differentiate themselves what i'd like to see more is the is the price the price start to come down i'm not seeing the price come down as much as i am hey buy this and we'll give you hbo to go for free or hey subscribe to this product it's not even necessarily subscribe to this streaming service it's Hey, bump your bump your data cap on your cell phone above above fifteen gig, and we'll we'll give you Showtime anytime for the next year for Here, free. Here is a Chromecast. Yes, <laughs> so so it, it's pretty interesting how they're trying to. In some cases, it's reducing the cost of the the premium channels because you're getting them for free through other sources. Right, but much just like the Google thing you were talking about, how many people. I think a lot of people still want the box hooked up to the TV and that's the, still the problem I have with Chromecast. It's not, it's, it's not self-sustaining. If the phone gets up and walks out of the house, um, you kind of got to disconnect and reconnect and do a bunch of stuff. So it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see where they take it. And ho- hopefully it will spawn more. And I'd like to also see additional content created. Um, you look at Netflix and, and Amazon and they're prime examples of, okay, we had streaming, we brought these TV shows, we brought these movies, and now we're creating our own content. Right. Uh, there was a question from the chat room. Riz, who's helping us, of course, produce the show tonight. Uh, his question is, and, and thankfully, this actually can't. This question also came up on a Cord Killers episode I was listening to today, so I have an answer for you. If you subscribe to YouTube TV, do you also get uh, YouTube Bread? Yes, but. You get access to YouTube Red programming. So the original content is included. You do not get the YouTube Red service as you do when you're subscribing to Google Music. And that's the uh, no commercial service, basically, right? On top of the original content. Um, <clears throat> realization today that I have watched a whole one original content thing turned off after five minutes because it was abysmal. Um, so, and haven't seen anything else that really kind of pops for me. Actually, technically, I've watched two YouTube bread things. The other was a movie by the Rooster Teeth guys that I saw at the local theater. Uh, so, there's that. Um, I, I so, so, you do get the content. So, if you want your PewDiePie, Riz, 
you got it. Uh, but you're going to get commercials with that probably. Uh, and you're not going to get commercials off of uh, other things and then banner ads and everything. And man, I love that experience on YouTube, <laughs> going to be quite honest. Um, whenever I open up an app that doesn't know that I'm logged into YouTube on my phone and it pulls up an ad, it, gets, it pisses me off at this point. You know, like when it opens up in like the Facebook browser because it doesn't know. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely noticeable. Uh, other TV news. So Amazon, they're doing things. Uh, they will replace Twitter in streaming the Thursday NFL games. Now Twitter, this is a streaming license. It's still going to show up. However, they do it on television, whether it be NFL network or in your local area or something like that. But it, that. It's being taken over, uh, that deal that, that was happening on Twitter. And I don't know. I'm curious if there's anybody out there on our stream or, or, or checking us out later. Uh, let us know. Did you watch it? I don't know if the Steelers were there or uh, any other teams you guys would be into. But but did, did any of you watch the games on Twitter? But otherwise, otherwise they're going to be on Amazon Prime. So you have to have a Prime subscription uh, in order to see these. And if you're a completist football fan I, I think this is what well, you also consider that that just went from a free service to a pay service to watch these games hey, that, I, I never think of Twitter to be where I'm going to go to pick up some kind of live TV I almost think of Facebook live as more of trying to get somewhere where I'm going to try to pick up kind of live content right um but I even wonder for Amazon Prime, right? I don't, I don't set a schedule to go and fire up Amazon Prime, Prime for something live. I think of it as a, as a large content archive. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I mean, they're really gonna, I think, need to market this to to raise awareness. Just, and I don't think Twitter did the greatest job. If you're in the tech industry and you you pay attention, then you probably saw it. But it's not like you saw. I, at least I didn't see lots of advertising around the NFL being on Twitter. And if Amazon doesn't advertise or make it very well known, I don't know how many people are going to figure it out or set aside the time to go watch it. Right, right. It's a different. It's a different idea. But it does. It, they do have. Like Showtime on there, and I don't know if they have a live stream included with that, but things like Showtime and Stars, you can tack onto your Amazon Prime subscription. So it's curious. They're trying to, they're really trying anything to get you on that on that 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 service, and I think it makes sense. Um, let's see. Uh, Thursday night games weren't that hot of a ticket, anyways. They weren't big names, says Riz. Uh, yeah, it was. It's always kind of like the the extra markets and everything, but it's still the NFL, so it's still going to be a good number of people uh, paying attention to it. Oh, Chilla. I think I want to dive into the super geeky thing that you have listed here. Um, tell me about what NVIDIA is up to. So NVIDIA released a, I think it's a beta of their Pascal drivers. <clears throat> and the Pascal drivers allow you to leverage an NVIDIA card on a Mac. Um, this is a pretty big deal for Hackintosh people. Um where you need to get additional video cards or pick from predefined video cards to get Mac running on a non Mac on non Mac hardware. Um, I I'm questioning, does this mean we're going to see more of a relationship between NVIDIA and Mac? Because I'm doubting Apple is just going to stand by idly while people expand the Hackintosh market. Um, or is this kind of, what's to come from potentially new hardware refreshes as well as there was a secondary article where you can use an external thunderbolt enclosure and actually mount the drive mount the card inside of an enclosure connect it up via thunderbolt and use it as a as a display Holy crap! I if you can if you can't see this like it's a big box that looks like its own kind of computer case uh, to begin with, and it's it's just sitting beside your MacBook. And that is it is worth considering. There is not a computer that, that Apple has put out in several years since the fabled cheese grater Mac, which I think was officially discontinued about three or four years ago, uh, that you could put a card in like this. 
Yeah, you, definitely. And I even look at it as I've seen some pretty intricate kind of home studio type things that people have built. And I almost view it as like you bring your you you bring your MacBook home and you dock it into this kind of setup where you get additional GPU. And I've I've heard I've even heard of their rumblings that Apple will actually put a GPU in their next monitor. Um, <clears throat> Cause yes, Apple's bringing back the, the Apple monitors. Um, I, I'm wondering is if, is this for those people that kind of build out a rack or, or something at their house when they dock in, they get a lot of additional power. You could do that with this, this kind of box where you, where you throw your, your NVIDIA card or whatever card in here and use it as an external GPU. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, yeah, it, 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 it it's an interesting. I, I love. The, I just, I just love this image of this giant box sitting right beside a MacBook. I, mean, I just can't get over that. It's right the there. size <laughs> of one of those, like what are the HTPCs or like I saw some gaming rigs yeah. that people would take around back in the day. It, it reminds me of it's, it's about the size of a shoebox. Wow, uh, that's amazing. What people, what people will do to get around these things. All right. Uh, well, hey, there's some uh, stuff going up in the going on in the area. First of all, a great article by the Post Gazette this past week. Hey, you still out there, crappy? Um, about oh, let me pull up the headline here. Uh, there's a nope, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Um, there's a there's a movement to actually uh, have a nonprofit teach coding to minority bi- boys in Pittsburgh, and this is something I've advocated for a bit uh, now on this show. Uh, you know, or, you know, Code uh, Code Academy Pittsburgh uh, up there in Allentown with our friends work hard. Uh, you know, are lending at least a little bit to this. But again, you know how how much option is there, especially in uh, certain neighborhoods that uh, you know to have access to to. to future teaching like this you know a future minded teaching like this so uh again that they're uh looking to uh you know fund the first bit of starting up and uh getting this going uh so uh check it out uh, a great arc over in the post because good to see that there's a lot of this stuff happening in the area so um also as far as local goes um oh chilla did you have any thoughts on that uh about uh you know expanding coding here in the in the school system no, I think it's I think it's a great idea, and it, I think it preps people if if they want to. I think it's a good way for people to figure out if they do or don't want to do that as well. I don't think people are exposed enough to it at an early age to even make a decision of, oh, I really don't like that, or oh, I'm really good at that, and I really like it. To kind of take them to the next step, and it's it's usually in late high school or college. It's a, it's too late to either completely change change your idea of career unless you start your career and then kind of switch after the fact a couple years into college it's, mm-hmm. now you're just expanding the college bill so i i think it's a good way to get people out there earlier yeah. and ho- hopefully it'll make a difference for them too and if you get that base of coding you can kind of apply to a lot of different things mm-hmm. uh missy's not here so i'm going to dive into the events and uh, uh pick and choose a couple things here for you guys to check out of course uh on uh, Saturday the 15th here, uh, there's actually going to be a, a CMU Summit, that's Carnegie Mellon, uh, on U.S.-China Innovation Interpre- Entrepreneurship. Uh, you can get tickets over uh, on the event for uh, and look up the CMU Summit 2017. Also, the Pittsburgh Technology Leaders Group Building Trust in Your Team uh, with the Pittsburgh Tech Council right down there on Technology Drive. Uh, you can check that on the members uh, section of the Pittsburgh Technology Council uh, seminar with Eurasmus Center for Future Energy Business Director Wolf Ketter. Uh, I think there's supposed to be some punctuation in there. Also being presented at CMU, uh, also on Eventbrite. PodCamp is representing right here at the Carnegie, Carnegie Library in Beachview, uh, right up the street, automating your social media on 419. Uh, as well as the same night, 2017 STEM Summit, uh, again with the Pittsburgh Tech Council. And uh, also that same night, wow, there's a lot of stuff happening that night. Risky business, small business legal tips over at the Pittsburgh Technology Council. There's a couple things happening at the Technology Council that night. Uh, As well as the 2017 International Hardware Cup Finals at Alpha Lab Gear over in East Liberty. A whole bunch of other fun stuff going on. Evening with PodCamp, the social media of politics on 4 
426 at Work Hard Pittsburgh up in the Allentown neighborhood. And uh, we'll we'll touch base on a few of these. Oh, don't forget the Millville Music Festival on the, on May 13th. Uh, we just talked with on Awesome Chat, uh, one of the uh, organizers from that. And a lot of people have been checking out that interview. Check out what they're doing in the area. Uh, so with that, Chilla, you're at ChillaTech.net. <laughs> I am on chillatech.net and uh, Chilla on the Twitters, John Chilla on the Facebooks. Quick question, and I'm going to interrupt the exit here. Are we allowed to talk about re- replay effects yet? We we can. I, I what 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 about it? You, you, last time you were saying you had you there was going to be some announcements. Oh, blah, I have, blah, I have blah, nothing. Blah. I have nothing announced. Nothing no, I have no new okay. information, but uh, I'm ho- I'm hoping that'll be at the forefront of the show when when that information is available. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you that I'm going to be intending in some fashion. If nothing comes up. I'm I'm just going to be wandering around playing video games like I did last year for a day <laughs> at least. Uh, so I mean, definitely check that out. Replay FX. They just did the Papa tournament uh, this past weekend, which I I saw some images from our friends Buzzy and Ryan, Ryan Haggerty uh, over there. Uh, Ryan actually is going to be joining us in a couple weeks here on the show. I uh, we have something lined up next week. Uh, I know next two weeks we have people lined up, and I can't remember who they were at the top of my head right now. Uh, so uh, look forward to uh, it's going to be a little more than just me and Chilla here hanging out by ourselves <laughs> talking technology with you guys hanging in the chat room. Uh, so look forward to that in the coming weeks as well. Uh, thank you to our, our our Patreon subscribers as well, patreon.com slash awesomecast, and uh, our friends that are dropping into the chat room here. We're again every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live on the AwesomeCast, as well as live.awesomecast.net. Uh, thank you to everybody that subscribes out there, seeing the numbers going up, and I really do ap- appreciate that as well. Um, and thank you, everybody, in the chat room. Uh, Chilla, like I said, Chilla Tech dot net at chill on the twitters i'm at sorgatron sorgatronmedia.com uh check out everything going on and some new podcasts cropping up over there and some announcements of some people joining the fold at sorgatron media so we're really looking forward for those uh coming out here uh and uh thank you so much thank you to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.